We all know the impact that global warming is having on our coldest climates. We can see the ice caps melting with polar bears set adrift. What we don't know as well though, we don't know very much about at all, is the impact that warming temperatures are having on our warmest climates. Yet scientists that have studied the tropics for decades are coming to the conclusion that the impact in tropical forests, like the ones behind me, could be far greater than anything that's happening right now at the poles. Now I know it sounds a little counterintuitive, but stick with me. The reason is this, the enormous amount of biodiversity that, that's at stake here in the tropics. My name is Justin Catanoso. I'm a reporter from Greensboro, North Carolina, and I've come to southern Peru, just outside Manu National Park, to report on climate change in the tropics. Over the past week, in settings wet, incredibly green, and often treacherous, I've followed a group of scientists from the Andes Biodiversity and Ecosystem Research Group. These are some of the leading tropical scientists on Earth. And they have been working in this study field for more than 10 years. They come from the United Kingdom, the United States, and from Peru. For 10 years, the research group has studied the effect of climate change on forests on the eastern slope of the Andes and the Amazon basin. Most of their work is fixed in Manu National Park, which is recognized as the most biologically diverse place on Earth. That's because in Manu, which is just behind me, the range of elevations has created ecosystems in barely overlapping vertical tiers, which scientists call a perfect laboratory. Here's an example. Take a single 13,000 foot slope of the Andes in Manu, and you will find far more tree, plant, bird and animal species than in the entire length of the eastern United States, from the southern tip of Florida to the northern tip of Maine. Species diversity in Manu is unparalleled, and those species are on the run. Indeed, as the earth warms, the race is on in the rainforest. Among the Andes group's most startling findings is that trees in Manu are migrating upslope some 8 to 12 feet a year to remain in their narrow temperature sweet spot. Such adaptability is a good thing, but unfortunately, the migration is only half as fast as it needs to be, given the current pace of global warming. Worse still, a new study finds that the tree line above the rain and cloud forests is barely shifting at all. That suggests an eventual barrier to upslope migration and the potential for mass species extinctions in the next 50 to 75 years. We stand to lose a lot, so why should we care? Conservationists argue that these are wild places of extraordinary natural beauty and should be preserved for generations to come. Climatologists make an even more practical argument. Tropical forests help regulate global temperatures by pulling carbon from the air. When tropical forests decline, the earth will be inclined to heat up even faster thus causing untold challenges for people around the world in the not-so-distant future. I was immersed in all this science and all these arguments as I trekked downslope some 13,000 feet with the Andes biologists through remote and barely accessible terrain. They would hop off the trail and plunge into dense plots they roped off a decade ago. They've marked more than a thousand trees and have tracked their growth and reproduction progress since then. Later, they collected tree species just outside Manu National Park at lower elevations of this rainforest. All this data is telling a story, and it's an alarming one. The upslope race for species survival is on, the biologists say, because we continue to pump too much carbon into the atmosphere, thus driving up global temperatures. Tropical forests are complex things, and the researchers I've been spending time with readily admit that some of their findings are going to be challenged and there's a heck of a lot more research to be done. But they stress that they know this. The earth is warming far too fast. Ice caps are melting. Sea levels are rising. And now these tropical biologists are sending up a new flare. Tropical forests whose vitality can dictate the vitality of the earth that we live on are under enormous stress and mass extinctions are a distinct possibility, if not in our lifetime, then in the lifetime of our children and our grandchildren. One biologist told me 
The situation is dire, but it's not hopeless. There's an urgent need to act. Things can be done. Policymakers need to make difficult decisions, and there's no time to waste. I'm Justin Catanoso. You can read more of my multimedia reporting here on the Pulitzer website.